So I've been seeing a lot of you YouTubers making this mistake in their videos or I guess rather doing this in their videos and I'm a glass half full type of person I like to think that they're not doing this intentionally but it's getting really annoying so let's just dive on into it shall we hello ladies and gentlemen it is your host with the most a real r32 here and destroy the ever living boo boo stain off of that like and subscribe button so we can climb even higher the 1200 ladder ladies and gentlemen there's a lot of youtubers i watch just to name a few we watch m cole 40 cali effect pack tcg sometimes joshua schmidt sometimes jesse cotton and of course we watch our videos to make sure that we don't sound like a complete moron in our videos uh but whenever i watch a lot of these youtubers mst tv to name another one some of these Yugi tubers, some that I haven't really mentioned, uh, do any, I shouldn't say do anything that they can, but they need to make sure that they're hitting that 10 minute mark. And there's one Yugi tuber in particular, I love you to death. I've been watching you for over a decade, M. Cole 40. Robbie, I love you to death. And I'm only using him as an example because he's like one of the bigger names in the community, subscriber number wise. Um, and for you newer subscribers, I actually put the sound effects in his outro. He let me put together his outro and stuff. And so, you know, I, I've got nothing but respect for the guy. He's got accolades to his name. He came in third place at a YCS with Machine Gadgets back in the day. He, he's been a good player back in the day, right? <sighs> this man knows how to put together a word salad. And I don't say this to like hate on the guy. And I don't say this to hate on like other Yugi tubers that do this. I mean, God knows with my channel size, I'm not like the biggest channel in the world, right? But when you're making a YouTube channel or even just a video, you want to sound like you know what you're talking about and not just BSing your audience. And you're probably wondering like, Avery, why are you covering this of all things? Well, we are pretty much in the Yu-Gi-Oh! off season. After Nationals, we're going to definitely be in the off season. And I wanted to make this video because I see a lot of up and coming Yugi tubers who want to get big channel names and want to get their names out there. And because of the size I have and I've been on the grind, I want to give back to the community in some way, shape or form. And so um, this is how I thought it would be best to do it other than like giving shout outs to just smaller channels in general and stuff like that, which reminds me, I need to give a shout out to uh, a channel. I'm going to do that in probably in the next video. But in my videos, I tend not to do word salad typically. And for those of you who don't know what a word salad is, just again, to use Uncle 40 as an example, Robbie may say something like, we're playing one copy of Stratos in this deck because we want to get, <laughs> Jesus, I can't even say it, because we want to give ourselves the option trees and the lines to further extend our plays and get those free chicken nuggies to help win our games. I got bored just saying that and you probably got bored just hearing that. What did I just say in that sentence that added sustenance to the damn video? <laughs> I didn't say anything. That's the point. Like, if you took a shot for every time people said option trees or skill trees, like, we could build a damn forest, ladies and gentlemen, and we would all be drunk off our ass. Like, I understand, and I especially understand for bigger YouTube channels like Team Samurai and, and Robbie Cole, where... They have a business to run, like especially Robbie Cole. He's talked about this in the past. I remember he was covering some sort of Rush Duel card like over a year ago now. And he said, yeah, I've become more of a collector at this point and, you know, a bit of an investor. You know, I don't play competitively as much anymore, which is saying a lot for someone like him, considering that like back in the day when he did vlogs like 10 plus years ago, he was going to regionals like every other weekend because he lived in, in or he lives in Indiana. It's like everything's like three hours away. He can go to a regional like every weekend or every other weekend. He came in third place at a YCS with, with Machine and Gadget when Machine and Gadget was like not the deck to be playing at that time. And so he knew what he was talking about back in the day. And I'm not saying he doesn't now, but he has his hands in so many different card games and projects that he I, I don't blame him for not having the time and he needs to put out content somehow I mean this man puts out four to five videos a day but I feel like that he's prioritizing quantity over quality so some of that's going to suffer now when it comes to like investments and you know product news and things like that oh my god he knows his stuff like he was just talking about the 25th anniversary uh rarity collection and he's like it looks like it's only going to be a north american set and you know we're gonna maybe get stuff in waves like we saw with the megatons like he went really in depth with it i, I was really impressed 
But then if you get him talking about the meta, it's kind of more generically based stuff with a little bit of knowledge here and there. But I mean, like this man plays Vanguard. He has a Vanguard channel, Vanguard 40. He has M. Cole Games, which I think he posts on from time to time. He plays Digimon. He plays Pokemon. He has his own storefront. He sells on TCG Player. He sells on eBay. He is shipping out orders uh, to the post office and he's doing all of this himself. So for players like him, it can be difficult to make, I guess, sustenance of videos when, like, especially when you compare it to stuff from years ago, but obviously before he did the two-minute discussion videos, which if you know about those and you're a true OG, he would make, like, these seven to ten minute long videos discussing the game, and he would have a lot of knowledge about it. And, of course, the game has evolved over time. Like, he had a perfecting the gadgets segment that he was really dedicated to, and that died off because gadgets just aren't really a thing anymore. Then he had renovating the gadget, re-innovating the gadgets, which is basically the same thing, but all that besides the point. You know... It can be hard to know the game inside and out when you have your hand in so many different pies, so to speak. And for someone like me, I try not to do word salad. Maybe some people feel like I do, but I try not to do that and instead just be blunt and honest because that's just the name of the game on my channel. You know, if you want to grow your own channel, you shouldn't be afraid to just tell it how it is to a degree. Like you don't want to be an asshole. And I kind of come off like that sometimes, I'm sure. But at the same time, like, I also try to be comedic with it so I don't just look like a prick on the internet. But, like, if I'm doing, like, say, a Mana Diem deck profile, and I say Mana Diem because I was just looking at the deck earlier today, and if I don't know what the cards do, like, let's say the deck wins YCS and I'm covering the deck profile, I'm not going to put it in a bottle and breastfeed it to you and just act like I know what I'm talking about. Like, could you imagine if I did a Mana Diem or any kind of deck profile and I'm like, hey guys, this came first at the YCS. It looks like we're playing three copies of Visa Starfrost here because we want, <laughs> I can't, again, I laugh every time I say this now, so that we can have the option trees and the skill trees and the lines of play to further extend our plays and have free chicken nuggies so that we can, you know, be able to build a board that our opponent can't stop. So Visa Starfrost seems really good this format. We're also playing the Triple Tactics Talent because, you know, again, we want the most amount of option trees. Like, no, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to be like, look, this is deck one of YCS. I don't know what the hell any of these cards do. I thought it was booty booty butt cheeks before I saw it. Go ahead and leave a comment down below and explain to me what this deck does because I don't know what this trash does. And then that way, number one, I'm being honest with you. Number two, if people start commenting on my video saying, hey, Avery, this is how the deck functions. Number one, I learn more as a player and I become more knowledgeable about a deck or an archetype, whatever. And number two, anyone who watches my videos still gains knowledge and gets better at the game inherently because they're able to look at my comment section and see what it is that other people are discussing. So it's not like you ever have to like fill time in a video just making a word salad like you're a chef boy RD up in this bitch <laughs> to like hit that 10 minute mark and move on with your day. Like, again, for bigger Yu YouTubers, I understand that, like, you have a business to run, you have Patreon, you have all these things, you've got these deadlines to meet, you have these orders to ship out if you're selling cards. But God, like, I don't care if you're a 100 subscriber channel or a 100,000 subscriber channel. The community has got to stop with this word salad baby back bullshit. If you don't know what you're talking about, tell your audience, I don't know what this deck does. I thought this deck was garbage. And, like... Again, I understand players like Team Sam and M. Cole and these other people where they're not able to be as competitive with the game or maybe they go down the Master Shits route and they want to put all their eggs into that basket, which is a horrible idea in my opinion, that maybe they can't be as knowledgeable. At the same time, why are you discussing the game? And to me, that's more like on the casual end. Like to me, it's like if you're a casual player, this is kind of how I see it. If you're a casual player and you want to discuss the meta decks, like say the top five best decks going into nationals, if you're only a casual player playing like a blue eyes deck at your locals, you're not gonna be able to have the insight that a competitive player like me or anyone else would have on the spectrum of talking about nationals. And like, that's not fair to the viewer and that's not fair to you because if you don't have the full knowledge to know what you're talking about, you're doing a disservice to yourself because you're opening yourself up to criticism. And that's not fair to you. And again, that's not fair to the viewer, but more importantly to you, the content creator. So all in all, guys, you gotta know what you're talking about. Like, don't make a word salad if you can help it. If you gotta do multiple takes, 
Do multiple takes. Don't make four or five videos just to have quantity. It's all about the quality. And I've had to learn that over time as well. That's why I do the, now the Yu-Gi-Oh! In-Depth series. That's why I do the Yu-Gi-Oh! Retrospectives because no one else does that stuff. So guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. I just, I want to talk about this because I've been watching videos from people lately and they just, they got all this word salad. It's like, just throw some ranch dressing on that bitch and you're good. Like, Lord have mercy. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.